<laughs> Mine's too far away to reach. My, should I, should I sniff the jar? Should I sniff what's in the yeah. jar? Is it gonna smell good or is it gonna smell bad? Oh, oh God, no. Oh, I was expecting it to just smell uh, like, you know, the he the heavy, the heavy cream that's in there, not the old dusty jar, but all I smelled was old dusty jar and it was real bad. In this <laughs> live episode of too. Fictional Hangover, <laughs> we talk about the short story Milk Door from the graphic novel horror collection Bad Dreams in the Night by Adam Ellis. And you know what? I don't even have my music queued up. What's going on with this? What's going on we're with just, this one? We're just being the most professional of all professionals right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Fictional Hangover, a podcast about young adult and new adult, and sometimes other books, series, authors, voice actors, and illustrators that is full of spoilers. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. And today we're going to discuss the short story Milk Door from the graphic novel horror collection Bad Dreams of the Night by Adam Ellis. Standard disclaimer. <laughs> if you haven't read this story, please remember that Fictional Hangover is all about spoilers. If you haven't read and don't want to be spoiled, too bad because we're live! Sucks Though to really, be this one. No, really, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this one would only take like two minutes to read if you've got the Hoopla app from your local public library. Anyway, you should go and check oh, it out if you want to. Or oh, oh, you know either of us and we're willing to loan you for a nominal fee. No, no, for free. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you haven't done this but want to pretend that you have, or if you don't care about spoilers, or if you just like the show mu so much that you don't care about any of that, then listen up. Yay! Yay, I was Come waiting. I was waiting for something to happen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yay! Yay! I always, I always have to cheer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited about this one. Uh, and, and, I suspect I may know what your background information is because Adam Ellis is very good at giving background information on each of the short stories in the collection yes so and then shocking no one that is what i'm going to read out loud to everyone a couple of years ago one of adam ellis's best friends jen moved away from new york to los angeles that pissed him off so he decided to draw a comic where she dies <laughs> okay. the house she rented oh. in la had an old sealed milk door in the wall, which he never knew was a thing. Samesies. When she told him about it, he joked that he was going to travel to California without telling her and start leaving dead animals in her milk door as punishment for abandoning him in New York. That eventually evolved into this comic. Jen is unfortunately still alive in real life as of publication of the book, and he hopes she's miserable every day for what she did to him. That's so harsh. I, I, I love it. I'm, I like it a lot. I mean, I, really, I, really I, I respect the honesty. Yes. Same. Same. Um, can I tell you something else? It's not really background yes. info, but like it kind of is. I don't know. It's more just me rambling. But last night... In preparation for this episode, I watched <laughs> the Dear David movie, which we started talking about Adam Ellis weeks and weeks ago after we both accidentally found this book on Hoopla at the exact same time, which was very, very weird. But I read the Dear David collection on Bustle, which I can share that here. Um... I remember reading this on Twitter when Twitter was called Twitter when it came out years ago. And he was documenting all of this horrible stuff that happened to him in his apartment. 
And then they made a movie about it. So I watched the movie last night. And I got to say, his storytelling, better than the movie. <laughs> he did a better really? job. Than, than the, yeah, the movie was, the movie was okay. Uh, but but it took a turn, and yeah, it took a turn. So read this collection because it's very it's very interesting and it's it's pretty creepy. So I like it. Oh 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 the sub the sub the sub Amanda the sub nah. the what the the sub. Of the stories, blah. No words. Noise. Freaked out. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. I don't know. I don't. Do you have? Do you have initial thoughts? My my original initial thought, which I think you've kind of stolen, thanks. Sorry. Is that I'm still chuckling that we found this book at the same time. When we were covering, um, I feel awful. Thanks, and it still makes me laugh that you were like, "You've been looking at my things." I'm like, no, I found it on Hoopla. No, no. <gasps> yeah, that was really, really, that was really good. <laughs> but like this book, this book doesn't match that book at all, so that makes it even better. <laughs> yeah. 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 But then I had to go out and buy it in real life. It's brand new. It just came out a couple months ago. And so I had to go out and buy it in real life, which is rare for me. I don't tend to buy the graphic novels. But uh, yeah, bought this one. Beautiful. I love it because it's horror and everyone knows how I feel about horror. It smells really good. Yeah, we made a whole video about that. <laughs> People should really All because of one video, you one one picture right. you sent me. <laughs> right. People should not let us do things on the internet. We are doing a, few, a lot more shorts. People should check out we our are. married lady Jane re one minute reviews. They're completely spoiler yeah. free as well. They really are. They some of them don't even really have words. It's just no gasps Reactions. and laughing <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine yeah um okay so should we should we jump into the summary of this story i feel like this episode is gonna be what 15 minutes long maybe it, i think it's gonna be a baby episode which is fine we're, we're out those now and again because you know typically they're an hour and a half at least there's some that creep close to three, and that just it makes me wonder sometimes. <laughs> Again, people should not let us do things on the internet. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get started. So there's a little bit of a note about this story that um, the, the, like everything in the story is set up as text messages. Um, so we're calling the main character in the story Jen, obviously, uh, because we know from the background information that this character's name is Jen, and then we're calling the other person Adam, because obviously he wrote the book. So with that in mind, it's January 11th and a sunny day in L.A. as Jen moves into her new cute home. She's texting her friend Adam back home in New York about its little quirk. A tiny little door with milk embossed on the front. Jen looks it up and finds that people used to get their milk delivered there. On the inside of the door, there's a phone number oh, for deliveries. 732-707-1765. Should she call it? I mean, I kind of want to call it myself. So you do that. I'll carry on with the summary. Because, you know what? Oh I'm gonna God. wait. <laughs> huh? I'm gonna I'm gonna wait. Yeah, and then we'll do it. I'll do it later. Okay. Because well, Jen does call. Number still works, but no one picks up. So Jen leaves a message. It might be nice to get milk delivered, but she doesn't like milk. So whatever. 
The next day, Jen notices the milk door is not only open, but inside is a bone. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> who would do that? Like, who? Why? That's not a milk. It's not a bone door. It's a milk door. Don't put a bone in there. What, is someone fucking with her? Like, what is this? Adam points out that it's kind of funny, but, you know, it's probably just a neighbor kid, like, being a dick. Jen throws the bone away. The day after, Jen finds another bone behind the milk door. This one also looks broken. Time to chalk the opening outside. This, however, doesn't work, as next, Jen finds a pile of teeth. Was someone inside her house? Jen scoops the teeth out and dumps them in the trash, which is becoming a collection of bones. Mm. Jen changes the locks in case someone is coming inside her house, but it doesn't help. She keeps finding bones. For weeks, every morning, there's a new bone behind the milk door. Adam suggests calling the cops, but what are they going to do? She could be being framed for murder. But, you know, the, the bone pile in the trash is, like, up to the brim. Jen decides she's going to figure out what to do in the morning. <laughs> the next day, Adam texts asking for an update. The bones have stopped! Yay! But there's something else. A bottle of milk? Hmm. No, no, definitely not. And it reeks. Jen so does pours this. it. I, I don't want to know. I don't, you smell it. I don't want to smell it. <laughs> Jen pours it on the bone pile and throws the bottle on top. The garbage is finally being collected tomorrow. During the night, Jen, rubbing her eyes, walks into the kitchen. Something catches her eye. Inside the trash can, two eyes in a misshapen, bulbous head are looking at her. The creature starts to climb out. It looks kind of cute at first, but its body looks wrong, and it has only three fingers on each hand, and it's covered in bumps and folds, and it has... If I may say so, not an attractive rack of bosom. They're pretty. They're pretty saggy boobs. It's it's a problem saggy boob issue. Yeah, it opens its mouth, filled with teeth from the milk door, and jumps at Jen. <laughs> it's February fifteenth, and a bloody day in LA. As Jen's friend texts, asking if she's okay. It's been a few days. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert, she's not okay, everyone. <laughs> she is not okay. Okay, so um, rather than throwing in a promo here where we normally would, how about this? Oh, if you love us, give us money. Join us on <laughs> Patreon at patreon.com slash fictional hangover or buy things from our shop on Redbubble. Fictional hangover.redbubble.com. Uh, fictional hangover dot redbubble dot com. Yay. <laughs> Yay. And also join us on Discord for conversation and book club. Yes. Which doesn't actually get it's us any money, but give us money as well. Yeah, I mean, you could just send us money in the mail if you wanted to. We have I would be okay. With <laughs> we do. We do have a PayPal. Okay, so what are your standout moments from this? It's so short. It's like, it's just, mwah, it's perfect. It's a, it's a really, well, that's one of the things. It's a really tight, well done, creepy story. That has that mm. slow build up and then delivers at the end, which is really good. But I have more questions. Can I, I'm going to ask you my questions. Question okay. one Why would you call the number? 
Question two. Um, why would you leave the bones to pile up? Question three. Why would you keep opening the milk door? Question four. Why would you pour the spoiled milk onto the bag of trash, which is just bones? Why? Yeah. I... I'm going to, I want to jump ahead just a little bit before I answer your questions, um, because my surprise is that the trash wasn't picked up for weeks. The book starts, you know, January 11th, 12th, and it's February 12th now. Like what garbage picks up more than once a month. I don't care where you yes. live. Garbage picks up more than once a month. So is is Chen just saving the bag of bones and, like, taking everything else to the curb? Or what's going on here? What's going on Why with the trash pickup the in of L.A.? Bones? Yes. So this is more questions. If that's the case, why is she saving the bag of bones? Right. And And... and uh, what you should do with the other trash because then you put the other bag yeah. of bones you take the bag of bones with the trash <laughs> maybe she's just been doing a lot of recycling and she's she's saving the bag of bones maybe she wants to recreate the skeleton maybe she maybe she's doing it Maybe she's maybe her own she's milk keeping the bones person. potentially. Maybe she's keeping the bones to then frame somebody for murder. <laughs> she's so worried maybe. about being framed for murder. Maybe she's trying to get her own yeah. back on Adam. She thinks that Adam's doing it. So she's gonna get the whole skeleton together and then to send it to, to New York for Adam to have. Maybe. Um back to your other questions. I I think it was one of my least favorite things that we poured the liquid into the trash bag. Like, pour it down the Don't sink. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> That's gross. Or, it's going to dr- leak I'll... through. If it's that gross, I wouldn't pour it even into my sink. I would take it outside and pour it into the outside drain. So there's mm. no residual in the inside pipes. I would pour it straight into the outside drain. Yeah, I'd probably like I would probably pour it in in my inside drain, but I would probably, you know, immediately clean the sink out, you know, put some cleaning solution in there as well. Because I don't I don't want to go outside and someone going to see me with my jar and they're going to ask me, "Oh, is the milk delivery running again?" and then they call their milk delivery for their milk door and then there's more bone monsters running around. Maybe I don't think it's a good LA. idea. LA is made up of bone monsters? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I've I've only been on the outskirts of LA, so I can't say for sure if that's true or not, but I'll go with it. I heard it on the internet just now. Everyone just heard it on the internet. LA I just heard bag it on the internet as well. I know. Yeah. Wow. Weird, wow. Weird. Wow. Wow. The more you know about LA. I know. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I really liked the teeth pile. But everyone no. knows that about me. I know. I know. <laughs> everyone knows that I appreciate the teeth pile. And I took a nice picture of this book before we got started and uh, got out my jar of teeth. Because, yeah, I have a jar of teeth. And I have my my jar that I have my milk in, which did not originally contain milk. It's not a milk bottle. It's uh, It actually had my collection of tiny baby doll hands. <laughs> now they're in a bag. Are we just going to go through your cabinet of curiosities here? Yes. Yeah, I think we should just show off <laughs> everything on the shelf. There's a pile of eyeballs up there. One of those chattery teeth that you crank up and it yes. and it goes. I got some of those up there too. There's a hand. Some of the good stuff in here. Some good stuff in here, everyone. <laughs> you need a body part, Amanda's got it. 
I probably have it. I probably do. At, at least if it's an eyeball or teeth or hand. Maybe a foot. I got a lot of weird stuff. And it's fine. I'm very surprised when you were in Louisiana, when you were in New Orleans recently, you didn't go into like a voodoo shop and pick up, you know, you could buy boxes of random bones. I honestly expected yeah. you to do that. Yeah, well, we were not there long enough for me to to really do that. And plus, I went to the vampire shop twice, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> not sorry. Not sorry. But I learned after the fact, I learned when I went in the second day, they were like, so how long are you in town? And we're like, oh, we're about to leave. And they were like, oh, we wanted to invite you to this, va- like, invite-only vampire, sp- like, speakeasy. Like, why didn't you tell us about this yesterday? I was so bummed. I was so bummed. I could have become a vampire just then, but we had to leave. Oh. I know. That's gutting. I know. I know. It really is. I know. But we're not talking about that, vampires. That sounds we're like one about... of those... Ho- yeah, but it sounds like one of the short stories that would have been part of this collection, where it's kind of like a tiny little story... And rather than mm-hmm. ending necessarily in death, mayhem, or murder, it ends in mm-hmm. absolute utter d- disappointment, which is, you know, horrific in and of itself. I don't know what you said, but I can assume that you said something about it being one of our favorite things when things end horribly, so. Yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. Yeah. It is one of our favorite things. Um, did you. Do you have a favorite character in this story? Is that a question to even ask? Is that a question that can be asked? <laughs> there's, there's literally Jen, the monster, and Adam on text. Jen's dumb. Adam's not yeah. really there. So the monster? The monster. I like the monster. Where did the monster get their eyes, by the way? Were there eyes behind the milk door one day? No, it'll be part of the the the, the eyeball for goo. It'll be in the the milk bottle. Okay, you think there's? Do you think there's actual eyeballs in the milk bottle, or it's just it's just, just goo. a liquid? Just that... goo. Yeah. Okay. Same with the saggy boobs. Okay. Yeah. I think if there had been more liquid in the jar, maybe if it was two bottles of milk we would have had some nicer bosoms yes yes (laughs) everybody knows you need two jars of milk to make bosoms yes everyone knows that what what's happening here is that the end of our discussion already seriously we've been we've been talking for what 20 minutes And we're already to Would You Rather? Is it already time? I think it is. It's such a short story. I know. It is. It really is. I'm okay with that. We asked on social media, would you rather live in New York or LA? On Facebook... 66% 66% are living in New York. On Instagram, 75% are living in New York. On TikTok, 67% are living in LA. And on threads, straight up 50 50. We have comments. Katrina we on do. Facebook said, Both sound great, but as I currently live in a wet and cold climate, the sunny place appeals to me. Hmm. Emily on Facebook says, I went with New York City because I'm a theater nerd. I would get my fill of plays and musicals every weekend if I lived there. Ashley on Facebook, New York has always been a love of mine, but Ellie has grown a lot uh, has grown on me a lot since my first trip there when I thought it was gross and disgusting. If I could live in Venice Beach, that would be just fine with me. Candice on Facebook said, I loved seeing New York. I love the beach, but I just have never wanted to see or be in California. LOL. That's fine. 
Fiona on Facebook could not cope with heat and raging bushfires. So, New York. Claire on Facebook says, honestly, would be happy with either, but probably L.A. for the weather. Colin on Facebook. This was trickier than I first appears, but I'll have to choose New York. It's got a climate not unlike sunny old England, but with more extremes, so at least I'll know what to expect. It's home to amazing culture spots and restaurants, and as I'm a fat lad who likes his food, it's also got one of my favourite comic book shops in the world, so let's not ignore that. Plus, it's had more songs written about it, some of which Claire will sing now. We're waiting, Claire. Don't let all the fans listening at home down. <sighs> are you Are you gonna burst into song? New York! Da, 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 da. I can't remember the words. Um, start spreading the news. Do, 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 we're gonna make a star in old New York. And that's literally the only two I can think of. <laughs> we have two more comments at oh, cool. Tar2D2 on TikTok because TikTok finally stopped being a dick for this one. LA when you're young, New York when you're older. And Mediocre 81 on TikTok is not playing the game. They said neither. Too many people in both. Plus high crime. So does that mean there's, you're in the Midwest? There's probably. Right the there's crime everywhere. There's crime yeah. everywhere. So. Um, I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick New York. I've never been to New York. Um, and I have been, I've been to Disney in California and that's really close. So, um, I'm, I'm going to pick New York mostly because I don't know. I like that kind of city style living and I kind of like cold weather sometimes. So I would like a a varying weather system. So I'm going to go with New York. I have been both to LA and New York. For, I was in LA when I was five, so I do have some very faint memories of it. Um, but I've been to New York a couple of times more recently, and I can very easily see myself living in that city. It is amazing. The vibe, just yes, 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 yes. If I could, I would, but I can't, so I shan't. Mm. Mm. <sighs> Maybe one day Next we question. can both live in New York. Sure. Yes, when we're rich, Would famous you ra- podcasters. <laughs> so, never. <laughs> Unless we get sponsored by Waffle House. Come on, Waffle House. You know you want to. Come on, Waffle House. Come on, come on. Okay. Um, This next question... Yes, it's from the story, but it's more from the illustrations. It's from the pictures of the story because Jen wears some really fantastic t-shirts throughout. So I'm going to ask you which t-shirt you would rather wear. Recently divorced dad, inquire within, or fish fear me. Which awesome t-shirt are you wearing? fear me. Fish fear me because... There's a story there. Mm. Why do fish fear you? Is it because you're a chef? Are you a fisherman? What Did you pee in the sea next to some fish and now fish know because they breathed in your pee? What's the story? This intrigue. I like it. Yeah. I think, I think the recently divorced dad shirt is funny. Because, you know, obviously not a recently divorced dad. But the part that gets me is the inquire within. How are you inquiring within? I don't understand that. So that's what I'm I'm choosing that one because it's weirder and it doesn't make any sense. With a knife. Oh, I'm okay with that. Oh, I just realized I didn't swap the... There we go. Hey, look. 
there, now everyone can see the question that we're asking. There's no one watching, of course, so there's no one here to answer the question with us, but we've got it up. We've got it on display now. <laughs> the principle. It's the principle of the matter. There are is. There is it at is. least one person watching. They just don't have comment availability. Next Should question. Should we move on to the next question? Yes. Yes. Would you rather call the milk delivery number or leave it the fuck alone? I'm calling the number. I'm going to call the number. Like, I kind of want to call it right now, but I'm also kind of scared of what is going to happen if I call it right now based on watching the Dear David movie last night. (laughs) I don't want to. Call it. I can't. I'm in the different country. It won't work for me. Where's the phone and I'm leaving. Number? I'm leaving well enough alone. I am not calling that number because I am not getting milk delivered. <laughs> so, so should I call it or no? If you are brave enough, okay. call it. I'm not brave. I'm not. I'm not brave at all. It's probably not anything. It's a number. We your support Jersey. mechanism. Oh, it's busy. It's just busy. It's a busy number in New Jersey. So that was a bust. (laughs) Oh, you know, you can Google. But why are we calling a number? It'll tell you. Why are we calling a number in New Jersey if we live in L.A.? This is just adding (gasps) more to the story. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. Oh, gosh. There's more Adam Ellis numbers that show up. Anyway, we're not... uh, That's done with. I called and it was busy, and that's the end. The next question. Would you rather find spoiled milk or bones behind your milk door? Bones... I can I can pretend the bones are something else. The spoiled milk is in a glass jar. It feels more purposeful, whereas I can pretend an animal's left the bones. Mm. Even though you caulked the door closed? Yes. I will delude myself into thinking mice. Okay. Yeah, the the jar does feel more purposeful also like is it spoiled milk or is it something else eyeball jelly booby flesh Mm. Mm. stomach juices Mm. yeah I think I'm gonna be with you I think I'm gonna I'm gonna rather find the bones at least you can build your collection. It's true. I can. Definitely. Mm. <laughs> Last question. Would you rather chalk the door and change the locks and you get to keep the bones or don't secure your house but get rid of the potential murder victim being delivered bit by bit? I don't need any of that. Um, I mean, I think... I think I'm going to caulk the milk door closed and and change the locks and keep the bones. But then when I keep getting them, I think I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave sooner than Jen left, I think. I'm not going to wait an entire month to leave. I like I think by the time you know the second bone appeared, gone. I'm out. Because the first yeah. one, you're right. It could be, it could be a fluke. It could be something. It could be something. Mm-mm. No, I'm out. Gone. Gone. Quickly. Yes, I agree. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm gone. I'm talking the milk door. I'm changing the locks. I guess I gotta keep the bones. I'm gonna give the bones to you for your collection. Thank you. You can have the bones. Thanks. But I'm also getting the fuck out of that house. 
Yeah. And going back yeah. to New York. Same, same Z's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I might not move to back to New York. It might not be that serious. But I'm not living in this house. No. Mm -hmm. No. Nah. Check your rental agreement, nah. people. Does it say anything about milk doors that give you monsters? Yeah. Well, you know, if you live in L.A. where we discovered that's where all of the bone monsters or whatever we were calling them, that's where all, they all live, maybe it's normal there. And they'll be like, mm. yeah, but you're only paying so much money a month, so it's worth it because, you know, it's very expensive to live there. That's not how I want a roommate. That monster was not paying rent. I was going to say, do you think the monster would pay rent? But no, because the no. monster just, you know, murdered her. So. Yes. Did it's the monster live lease, there before? You have paid. Oh. Yeah. That's a good question. It is. There's so many questions. So many random things this story makes you think of. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Favorite final thought quote. What you got? <laughs> There's nothing some thick juicy chalk I can't fix. I like the follow up to that. I hate you. <laughs> That's my favorite. I hate you. Stop it. I hate you. All the time. I like oh, that you picked oh. that one. It was a nice pairing. It was. It was. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you liked this, try this. Can I? Can I just say that I want to just share another short story from this collection? Is that okay? Is that cheating? It's kind of cheating. No, because I am as well. I, you know, I cheat with with, oh. with this. I always do. But I'm going to do the same. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So. I want everyone to read Buttercorn Ramen. Oh, oh. I think oh. it was so bad. Oh, it was. I love it. Oh. Yeah. So um, in this one, Adam travels to Japan and finds a really great ramen spot that he goes to constantly. So constantly, in fact... Well, I don't want to spoil it, but um, you know the saying, you are what you eat. <laughs> eee! Eee! Oh, what are you going to share? Me. I'm oh. going to share Viola Bloom, which is the last story in the collection. Oh. I don't want to say mm. too much because of where it ends. Mm. Mm. Adam receives a sepia torn photograph of a woman in the mail but when he leaves his apartment he notices a woman who looks awfully like that photograph staring up at his apartment but mm. that can't be the same woman can it? So good. Oh, this whole collection is so, so good. So creepy. Every single story is a page turner. It was mm -hmm. brilliant. It's brilliant. So good. So good. So good. Right. I'm not letting you off. Just doing another short story from the collection as the new Indie Indie Spotlight because it is a new book. You have to give me something new. Give me something new in the new Indie Spotlight. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, so I found this one. We got this one on NetGalley. Um, it's called Invasive, and it's by Cullen Bunn, Jesus Hervas, Federico Sabatini, and it comes out October 22nd. Dr. Carrie Reynolds was a veteran trauma surgeon with a godlike mastery of muscle and bone. But outside the operating room, her rigidly ordered life spiraled into chaos when her daughter, Heather, a recovering plastic surgery addict, suddenly disappeared, only to mysteriously reemerge in a catatonic state, her vocal cords removed. 
the latest in a series of victims scarred by a battery of brazenly cruel medical procedures that have baffled police and left an alarming number of once ordinary citizens maimed, mutilated, or dead on arrival. Deep beneath the streets of Cary City, a new kind of underground hospital has just opened its doors. And once inside, there are no rules, no oaths, no taboos too deep to not be broken. Together, a new class of surgeon has sworn to pierce the final threshold of accepted medical orthodoxy one incision at a time. The scalpel is their tool. The alleys are their operating theater. Murder is their medicine. And only Carrie can stop what they're planning next. Murder is Ooh. their medicine? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh. Oh, I might have to do that when I'm murdered. Wasn't yeah. <sighs> so, we've got that one already, Claire. Oh, that looks very good. That looks very Jack the Ripper. Mm. Mm. Okay. Amanda. Well. Amanda, I'm going to prove that we do have somebody watching. For I have received a message okay. from my mum. Oh, Hi, mom. okay. Uh-huh. Her hypothesis about the bones. She thinks there's a giant cat leaving presents just like when she was younger living at home. Their cats used to leave bones and other little gifts under the kitchen table. So it could be that there's a cat living in the house that Jen doesn't know about. It doesn't explain the monster, but I'm, it does explain where the bones are it, coming from. Right. I'm, a, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with surprised cat guest. I like that. Thank you. Gifts from the kitties. For, for that. Yes, thank you so much for that little addition to the story. It makes it better. It makes it less scary. Until Plus, you get I like eaten cats. by the the buxom, yay, <laughs> flabby buxom bu- monster that comes out of the bin. Oh, clean your bins yeah. out, people. Don't leave it a month yeah. long. It's just monkey. Ugh. If there's one thing we've learned yeah. is empty your trash. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, uh, so that's it for this live episode of Fictional Hangover. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. Join us next time as we discuss Where the Drowned Girls Go, a wayward children book by Sean and McGuire. Look out for our Would You Rather polls on social media. Don't forget about our book club on Discord. Be sure to visit our shop on Redbubble at fictionalhangover.redbubble.com for all your favorite fictional hangover-themed merchandise. And become a patron of ours on Patreon at patreon.com slash fictionalhangover. Until next time, remember, the only cure for a fictional hangover is another book. You can find us at fictionalhangover.com and follow us on all social media at Fictional Hangover. If you like this episode, check out our others and be sure to rate, review and subscribe so you don't miss out and like when you're on YouTube. Check out our YouTube. We've got loads of shorts now. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye. Bye.